Hello and welcome to another episode of the Applebaum Bytes podcast. Today is episode number 19 and we have two amazing special guests on the show. The first one is our co-host who is with us for a few weeks and it is the one and only Dr. Stephen Brown. Welcome, Stephen. How Hello, are you? welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you. That's great um, to be here. It's always fun. Yeah. How's the weather? over there, Stephen? Uh, it is currently snowing. It started to snow in the afternoon yesterday, and it has been snowing all night, and it is still snowing. So it looks like cars will be buried, and that's okay. It's kind of fun. In my belief, it's always it's snowing. In my belief, it's always snowing where you are. It's, I, I would say it's about a six to eight month winter in a bad yeah. year here. So that's, you know, at least you have a white Christmas. Like, that's guaranteed. Yeah, you that's have true. a that's lot true. of white things, so. <laughs> You have also a, 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 have a white Easter, but that's another thing. Yes, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, let me introduce our special guest of today because it is Kate. She's the CEO of the wonderful brand Benu Fountain Pens. And uh, we all know it, of course. Uh, welcome, Kate, to the show. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to join you guys. Um, thank you for having me on the show. Um very nice to to be able to participate uh, and to discuss. Yeah, it's really fun to have you. Our pens and it, pens in general. It's wonderful to have you here, Kate. Kate, how are you doing? Uh, because uh, you recently relocated the the location of Benu. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm doing well. Thank you for for asking. Uh, it was challenging time. I can't deny it. Um, moving from one country to another country, especially if you need to relocate business fast, it's um, mm. not a, an easy thing. And uh, Armenia is a wonderful country, but we've never been there before we uh, relocated. And so it was quite strange and foreign for us and uh, everything new. And... Um, the relocation itself wasn't easy, but uh, it started to feel like home already. And uh, yeah, we're doing well. Everything is as good as it can Very be. Very glad to hear that. Very glad to hear that. Very happy for you. Uh, but before, before we start this whole podcast thing, we always do the pen check. The pen check. And Stephen, I would like to ask you to start first. So, Stephen, what pen, oh, yes. what fountain pen do you carry with you today? Would be funny actually if you if you pop up with a ballpoint pen or something. But yeah, yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking about that. <laughs> but I, uh, it's like, look, it's my, it's my, it's my little sharpie. Uh, yeah, no, oh, nice. Um, it, I, it's not, it's not a Benno pen, um, but it is, it is a, a Leonardo, which I think is very pretty. It's mm -hmm. a, um, a, a furore. Sorry, I want to say momento zero. It's a furore. It's a it's a grande, uh, and I I just think I'll just uh, pop my special device on here. Uh, I think it's a very attractive material. It's just a really nice, very very swirly thing, and it has a it has an, a nib on it because otherwise oh, it can't write. Uh, but it's 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 a it's a broad nib. It's a gold nib, and it's it's a very pleasant it's a very pleasant writer, and I think. What ink do you have in it? Um, I have um, a very nice, easily obtainable Waterman, whatever their turquoise is called now, uh, because they change names yeah, basically every other year, often. I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but but it's the turquoise that used to be South Sea blue, and it's lovely. It's easy to get. It's inexpensive. And I like it. I think I think this was a pen that Salvatore uh, uh, sent to me to review, and it's possible he you, wanted this. You back. never you never shipped it back. Okay. No, never ship. I I forgot mm. to ship it back. <coughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, so Kate, um, let's talk about your pen check. What fountain pen do you carry with you today? Um, I think it's traditional that pen makers. Um, uh, test new pens or pens they are about to launch by themselves. So mm -hmm. what I'm uh, going to show you is not a pen. It's a prototype. I took it from my 
business partner tell desk and uh, just start writing with it. And uh, I wanted to be the first to try and see how comfortable it is. Um, uh, we 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 probably be able to launch it uh, this year um, if everything goes well. Um, so let me show it to you. It's strange. It's a very strange shape. Um, Mm -hmm. uneven facets and um, as far as I know um, Alex plan is planning it's really to interesting. use uh, um, mm -hmm. chameleon like colors and chameleon like pa mm -hmm. painters uh, and it will be crazy colors as always as all the new are um, it's yeah. um, nearly the same shape as our talisman it will be uh, possible and I feel it very mm -hmm. comfortable. Usually, I probably the the, uh, the strictest uh, critic of our product before they uh, go to shelves. But so far, I like I like I like this pen and I, I use it with pleasure. So here we are. How long does it usually take uh, take Skate from prototyping till it hits the market? About so a how year. long do you carry a prototype with you? Yeah, yeah. for about yes. a year. We, okay. we usually start testing you... ourselves, then uh, yeah. we give it to other people with long hand, different preference, short hands, maybe arthritis, maybe um, some specific preference, just to make sure that pen feel comfortable. Where can we sign up for this? Hmm? <laughs> of course, <laughs> always. <laughs> Yeah, we can just sign up like we want to be like the test persons to, to test the it's new venues It's a great idea. Out. It's a fantastic yeah. idea. It would help us enormously. Sure. All right. All right. So you can send one to me and to Steven uh, every to time Steven, we have a new yeah. product. That's fine. We, we, will, we will, you know, we will sacrifice ourselves for this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. For this. We no all problem. do. Yeah. Um, all right. Thank you so much, Kate, for this wonderful pen check. It's always fun, you know, to see, um, at least I think it's really fun to see the prototypes because that's actually, that's something that you actually never see in the market. Um, I wanted to say like Benu pens are always, you know, colorful, shiny, bright colors. Um, and to see like a, a, a black Benu, that's yeah. quite unique, yeah. but then I'm looking at my pen check for today and I'm thinking like, okay, but there are black Benny pens because I have this one and um, I'm not sure. Okay. Do you recognize it? Of course. Of course. Yes. So Soul this is the, roses, this yeah. is the, yes, this is Skulls and Roses. This is a smaller. Um, do you want to tell a little bit about it, Kate? Because I can tell about it, but I think you know more about this pen than I do. Um. It wasn't our first uh, attempt to produce sculptured pens, and uh, we find this uh, very interesting design. Um, we both, Alex and I, a big fans of old school tattoo styles, um, pirate uh, stems, um, uh, hard rock stems, and um, um, we, we think it looks beautiful on on pen. As this exact model has schools and roses, as the name suggests, and um, it's, it, it is clipless and um, fairly light. And um, um, what what else? Only three models: black with a red ring and red one. Um, yeah. So what I really like personally about this fountain pen is uh, this grip section. Mm. Uh, it's it's really sleek. Um, it is a transparent red, which makes it more, you have a little bit of more depth in that grip section. Um, so that's what I really like about this fountain pen. And of course, the skulls and the roses, that, that is like, that finishes it up. Because this is something that you will never see on other brands. So that's really fun to, to have. And it's something completely different. So that's what I really like about it. Basically, and, uh, do you have any I... suggestion? Because um, uh, we can use this technique to uh, print to. Um, uh, uh, you to, can print uh, Stephen his face on a pen. Is mm. that possible? <laughs> yeah. I think it will sell. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. <laughs> 
it will be a really specific market, but eventually it will. <laughs> yeah, sell. it will be sp- like yeah. to three people. My, <laughs> my 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 worst fear is what people will then do with those <laughs> pens. But yeah. but let's not get into that. Um, yeah, no, I and I think I think this is something to me that that has has stood out for Bennu from from the, the the earliest models I have seen that you do do things that other companies don't and it it takes a certain level of guts i think to to do that because it's easy to go you know for another black pen with gold trims and it looks like a cigar and like there's, there's enough companies to do that and i think that's i think it's it's fairly remarkable that that you continue to do that the interesting shapes and the size and like you said the with the prototype you showed the uneven facets the funky colors, the 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 the, the cool things, and and the the, the cool things, I th- themes and and stuff like with, with these skulls, for example, I think it's really really neat, and I I think because of that, it's a really fun brand because it's a brand that actually stands out from the rest, and that's not this is not me trying to flatter you because you're sitting there, but I mean I I really I've I really felt that way about Benu from the start. This is a, a brand that actually has its own identity, and this is not just trying to do what others are already doing. Thank so you. I think that's really cool. Thank you. I just wanted to say And, that. and so uh, your opinion, Stephen, is not based on one model because you reviewed quite some models of Benny. It's not like you reviewed one or two or three, but yeah, I no. think maybe you reviewed like 10 or 20 pens of them. Mm-hmm. But um, so it's it's really based on a, on a couple of models. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I think that's fun. Really, and every I'm, time you say I'm something really like that. And, uh, yes, this is exactly what we always wanted to do and uh, that we are trying, constantly trying to do. And yes, of course, it's always a risk. And uh, we had a couple of models that was uh, not that very well accepted because they're weird, they strange looking and like our parrot uh, pen, uh, so, so, some Hmm. Uh, some comments were so funny it's like it's, it, it was a really strange looking pen but we, we love doing we love doing what we do uh, we love trying new things and maybe be a little bit unconventional and this is really very nice of you to say so because this is exactly what we wanted to do and i think well yeah no and i think it's true and i think that this is the, the price you pay for doing something that's creative and that's a little out of the ordinary is that you you will find people who don't like it. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I think many, many artists over the years have experienced that. Like initially, they, they may not be well received, but I, I, I do think there's a market for it. And I, I yeah, I think it's a, it's a lovely initiative. And by the way, uh, if I choose uh, the reaction to our product, I would rather uh, choose let's say rage and disgust and whatever strong emotion rather than indifference and uh, it's Mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. nice pen one of many other pens um Mm -hmm. we want strong emotions from every hour model and uh, to be completely honest usually it's uh, more the, the the emotions that people shows by touching, looking, using our pen, pens, uh, strong emotion of fun or joy or surprise. It usually gives me much more pleasure than like, sales or uh, number in uh, how popular mm-hmm. pens are. This is what we are trying to do. We try to create um, uh, to create something with strong emotions, and this is very very important to us. No, I can mm-hmm. imagine. Um, so my whole agenda is a little bit mixed up now, thanks to Stephen. Um, yeah, this is what I do. Yeah. You see, I like to disrupt things no too. Problem. <laughs> no problem, no problem at all. Uh, but then we will uh, put the question of Eric, of our previ- uh, previous guest. We will uh, move that a little bit forward and let's discuss Benu a little bit more. Because, Kate, I wanted to know how this whole design process is going mm-hmm. with all those uh, funky designs and bright colors and things like that. Where does this start? Like, is because I know that um, you are having this company together with your husband. Um, you know, where does that start? 
Um, I think I think uh, each and every one uh, collection of model or new color uh, has uh, some kind of background story uh, and um, usually inspired by different things. Uh, for example, uh, Briolet, uh, one of our pens that was um, inspired by Alex's long passion, passion for um, minerals and uh, rare stones. And uh, mm -hmm. because he is a jeweler and um, ha has this background, this Briolet is a special cut for of diamonds uh, that has very, very beautiful structure. And uh, this stone was what actually not stone, but the cut of the stone was what actually inspired this collection. With Talisman, mm -hmm. it was, for example, uh, a little bit different. Um, we were talking with one of our clients who claims that uh, Fountain Pants has some kind of magical power to her. She's going to go for an exam and she took a special pen, uh, maybe not even ours, I don't remember, but uh, she claimed that this particular pen always bring her very high marks. And um, this is how the idea of Talisman uh, was born, because, um, yes, we, we might not believe in such things, but we always usually have something that we believe might bring a little luck to, to our everyday, to whatever we do. And we decided we, we need to combine those two things. We need to explore what usually in different countries pe people considered lucky and uh, mm -hmm. devote each pen to this specific substance and tell a story how uh, people use it in uh, in their life. Mm -hmm. Maybe add a little this the part of this substance to the pen to, to give it a little, I don't know, fun and uh, artificial artifact-like feeling. Uh, so. Each each pen has has story and um, something that inspires this particular pen, this particular model. Mm -hmm. I, I, that, that's something that I really like uh, because the company is not not that old. You know, the company started in two thousand sixteen, um, but has already quite a large collection of pens with all those stories behind it. Uh, every model is different from each other. They never look look alike so it's always something different mm -hmm. same with the prototype that you just sh showed it's something completely different that you have already made um is this something um more for the future what what, what do you expect more about the future um we had a, to be completely honest we had a, a quite a, a large roadmap for new collection and for new models um, uh last year but with our relocation it's got distorted and it's so far it's very difficult to predict predict what we launch next uh we have some still have some plans but uh when or what it will be still i'm still not sure we we are planning we were planning and still planning to launch at least one collection this year mm -hmm. and maybe uh also work on hand painted pens they were quite successful but mm -hmm. so far they only available from our uh, website because of the costs and we are working on making them available through our retailers as well and um <laughs> i'm really happy with <laughs> to that make it, to make them available locally we are mm -hmm. very lucky with two uh, artists who works with us. One uh, is a girl who, who was in, on our team in Moscow and she moved with us here to Yerevan. And she's a very, very brave girl um, mm -hmm. with her large family, her mother and two children sh uh, who she needs to support. And she's a very talented painter and we want to explore new, uh, new um arts with her and try to make painting more complicated, more, more uh, interesting. And another painter, uh, she, we met, we met uh, with her here already in Yerevan, and mm -hmm. uh, she, she had an incredible, um, 
the artwork is just breathtaking and we, we, we want to be able to uh, market those pens maybe with gold nibs uh, as well if you if if you'd like i can show you just i have on my table a few samples um yeah sure we are always happy to see samples right Stephen? uh yeah. they are the not the i think they will kill me if i touch something but I will try to be careful. Um, it, they are not covered with the final layer of resin, so they're not protected. I, I'll, I'll try to be very, very careful. Just look at this. Okay, move it a little bit to the left. A little bit more. Yes, perfect. Wow. <laughs> Both crazy, you know, and artistic. This is wonderful. That's very cute. That's very nice. Yeah. And it's Thank all hand painted, you. all those small details. It's just painted yeah. on it. Amazing. I love this one. Okay. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. It's a girl, I think, right? It's also really cute. Can you can it's you describe Alice. it a little bit, Kate? Oh, it's Alice it's in Wonderland. Uh, I see it now. The, yeah. Uh, Wonderland. Yeah. Wow. That's really cute. It's amazing. Nice. So our plans to, to, to explore this area, to maybe market them with gold nibs. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, um, new colors to our existing collections. That's always to great. our existing life. But it's really interesting that you to explore this whole new kind of area with hand painted uh, fountain pens, because the area that you can make a painting on is so small. So it's really precise work. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about you, Stephen, but if I make a, a drawing, I really need a big paper to make it look like something, you know? I can, I can, yeah, I don't know. I can make a, a human being like two rounds and some arms and two feet, and that's about it. But um, make a drawing like this on such a small surface. And, and that, uh, Steve, under Steven, special you're, you're glasses. making a drawing. I don't know what you're talking about. It's pretty, yeah, pretty easy. Yeah, I can do it. Wow. Exactly like I draw. I don't know what you're talking about, man. It's easy. All right. Sorry. Uh, we're here with this unique artist, Dr. Stephen Brown. <laughs> 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 no, but it, but it's too obvious. Like I mean, you, 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 the, the, the surface on a fountain pen is small, yeah. and and it's not only small; it's also curved. So it's it it, it requires artistry to actually be able to to create something that that works mm -hmm. on on that curved surface and small surface. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's always very interesting, I think, to see hand painted pens. How long does it take yeah. Kate, to make one hand painted pen? Because I think Depends, people don't understand uh, how how much of uh, time mm -hmm. is put into such a hand painted fountain pen. Depend uh, on uh, it depends on uh, complexity of artwork. Of uh, if it's something really simple, like um, we started with um, summer meadow, uh, there is only a couple of uh, elements on uh, the pen. It was, I think, honeybee we, we, um, painted with uh, gold. And uh, usually a painter can produce like five, seven, seven uh, pens, paint like five, seven pens per day. But if mm -hmm. it's um, something much more complex, like the one I sh I've just shown you, uh, it usually takes several days. Um, to to complete one, maybe ten days to to, to complete one pen. Yeah, wow, well, I can imagine that. Mm. Um, but Kate, we have this wonderful question of Eric, our previous guest, mm. for you, and I think Stephen he just wanted to talk over it to, to maybe you know I I would forget it, but I didn't do that, and I need to ask you this question because it is a really interesting one and this question was can you tell me what inco rimo what was it again steven rimo or rimo inco rimo you're right you're okay. inco -Rimo. can you tell me what inco rimo stands for kate i think someone uh told me that uh it's something it it, it has to do something with uh, writing letters 
uh, age day uh, to, to a new person. And uh, it's, uh, I think it's in February. Yes. Wow. Okay. Wonderful, Kate. Stephen, maybe you can tell a little bit more about this. Woo. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it, it was a project that that Eric started um, quite a while ago. This has been going for a number of years now, uh, and I think it was born from his desire to have people use their pens more. So it's exactly what Kate said. You you write a letter a day every day for the month of February. Uh, and it's it's usually a lot of fun uh, because you know people people get to use their pens some there there's even a website dedicated to which you can get addresses from random people on the internet and just send them letters and that, that can be a lot of fun yeah so, so it's, now it's every, everybody has to wait 11 months because this episode uh, will be live on yeah. march 1st so um you know next year in 11 months uh, make sure to write it down in your agenda uh don't forget inco rimo um, let's have a talk about some new products that are live on the applebone.com website. New products. Um, the first one that I would like to mention is, wait, 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 let me first check. Kate, are you a Harry Potter fan? Yes, I am. Stephen, are you? I have seen the movies. Why do you... Oh, I, I, I thought actually yeah. that you wear the glasses because you were a fan of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm a little, I'm a little magician. <laughs> yeah. Um, because Montegrappa, they just recently launched a new Harry Potter, so they have this collaboration with Harry Potter, and they did a wonderful job uh, already with some previous editions, but now they uh, launched the platform nine and three quarters edition because every story needs to start somewhere and the harry potter stories they all start at the platform nine and three quarters at least there is where the the magic begins um steven have you seen this fountain pen yet yes i have oh, wow what do you think and i think it's a, a kind of it, it looks like it has enamel on it which is always mm -hmm. interesting um and kind of like i mean sort of ties into what we were just talking about in ways of using a pen as a as, as a canvas to to put art mm -hmm. on um i think it looks quite nice it, it gives me a bit of a a vintage uh, train station feel which is obviously the point mm -hmm. of the pen so I, I i think they succeeded well that so it should should be fun it should be fun to yeah. check out no yeah. i think they did a wonderful job there's this uh, number six stainless steel nib on it um and uh, it's the same model that they used for the other harry potter editions with the uh, with the uh, uh, various houses and uh, things like that so it's 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 definitely something that looks interesting um another new product that i would like to mention is the waltman 105 years anniversary edition so waltman exists now 105 years it is a limited edition of only 105 pieces it is made of solid sterling silver cap and it is uh, finished with a wave pattern engraving in guilloche with the guilloche technique sorry and the cap has a lined pattern engraving which is also with the guilloche technique and then the wave pattern is then built with a gorgeous high polish transparent chocolate leather and it really looks nice so um it is plated by the way the solid sterling silver is plated in rosé gold so it is a really nice brownish fountain pen with rosé gold details and steven i know that you like brown pens because your last name obviously i do like i do like brown pens what? and and this one in particular looks i'm just the reason i'm looking down is i'm looking at a picture of it sorry but it, it looks like a piece of chocolate that i want to eat um which is it doesn't take much for me to want to eat a piece of chocolate but anyway um i i think it's a very nice it's a nice model. The, the, the Waldman pens that I've used almost invariably have always been very nice writers, very pleasant. Uh, the silver the silver is, is not for everyone on pens, I feel, but, but I, I've, I've always really liked it. I think it's a very, it's a very classic material and it makes for very classy looking pens. So I, I, yeah, I look forward to trying this. 
it yeah. would be fun. I, I, I'm really yeah. looking forward Lucky to this. Lucky you! I, I wish I could also try this one, this limited edition. I saw, I saw it on a, on a, on a photo, and it's really beautiful. Very, very elegant. Um, it's and it's actually actually. Well, it's no problem, Kate. Yost, Yost will get a couple. No He'll problem. send you one. There are no 105 problem. pieces we'll made. Most likely, no we issue. should get 100, and then the yeah, rest so. will get five or something like that. Yeah, yeah. no issue. We can give away some. We will arrange that. No yeah. worries. But it's quite funny because Waldman is quite the opposite of the Benu brand. So it's like, Absolutely. you know, Waldman is really classical. It, uh, most of the time, the mm -hmm. pens are made with sterling silver. Uh, they're really heavy, things like that. While the Benu pens are most of the time, they're quite light all kind of ordinary designs and bright colors so it's completely different it's like it, completely different but it's fun to to have those kind of brands like in the same episode and we can talk about that and discuss it because at the end they all write and uh, they're both beautiful so um yeah um so that's about the new products uh, we're almost heading to the end of the show but steven you have a question for Kate, right? Yeah, and it's it's a classic question that's on my mind a lot, Kate. So what would you rather fight? Would you rather fight <laughs> one horse-sized duck or would you rather fight 10 duck-sized horses? It's, it's, an, it's an, a classic philosophical conundrum we have here. One horse-sized duck or 10 duck-sized horses? Mm, 10 little, the little first horses. One. Definitely the first yeah, one. Just... Uh, yeah. It should be very cute. Uh, That's true. Can you imagine such such a creature? I think it's fun to, to, to fight. And uh, maybe, maybe make it your pet <laughs> at the end. Yeah. That's right. So yeah, maybe. Yeah, just, I don't know if I, I would care for many, many small horses. No, definitely the first one. <laughs> no, that makes that makes complete sense. I also hope that this will inspire a future brand new pen, possibly hand painted, because I think that the the, the horse sized duck would would certainly be a good element for <laughs> a pen. But yeah, no, thank you. This is all I ever wanted to know. Thank you so much. It's, it's always cool. great to have such a creative brain like yours, uh, Stephen. To come up with questions <laughs> like this that nobody comes up with. I really love that. Um, all right, Kate, then let's move over to you because maybe uh, you have, a, have, a, have, a, have a, another question for our next guest on the show. And you don't know who's going to be the next guest yet. But um, so Eric had that question for you about his, uh, the, the Inco Remo. But what question do you have for our next guest? Mm. It's difficult to without knowing who it I might know. be. That's the fun part. Maybe it, it might get, but I, I think, well, of course, the person who will you invite will be in uh, our industry and quantum pen fan. And so my question would be how your mood uh, and your surrounding affect the pen that you pick for Friday. That's a good one. I will write it down. So how does your mood so how does your mood um, well, once again, so how does your mood um, how, how, your, how does your mood and how surrounding and environment you are currently in affect uh, your choice of your font and pen for today. Affect your pen choice. Okay, perfect. So that will be the question for Sash Minyas because he will be our next guest on the show next week. So Sash, if you're watching this right now, you can prepare already a little bit, but it, of course, it will be more fun if you haven't watched this yet. And yeah, you have to answer straight to the point. Um... Kate and Steven, we're already at the end of the show. Steven, I would like to thank you so much for uh, co-hosting this together with us. It was, again, a lot of fun. And uh, well, next week, uh, we will see you again with Sash. I'm really, really looking forward to that episode. Um, we'll also be a little bit of a, of, a, of a flashback because I think Sash also came to the FP Jigs 
podcasts quite often. So a little reunion. Yeah, and he's always fun. And I, I also think that, that Kate has really asked a brilliant question because Sarge owns, I, I don't know how many pens Sarge owns, but Sarge has many, many pens and a very wide yeah. variety. So it's it will be really interesting to see how he makes that choice of yeah. what to write with. But it's awesome. Yeah. I look forward yeah. to this. Should be um, fun. Kate, thank you so much for your for having taking the time and chatting with us uh, talk about Benu and of course with your wonderful input for our next episode with this amazing question um, we wish you all the best with the Benu fountain pens and if you're watching this now and you want to buy a Benu fountain pen of course you can buy it with Benu directly you can also buy it with us of course we're happy to help you um, so Kate if there's anything that you would like to say do it now uh, thank you so much again for inviting me. It was my great pleasure. A lot of fun uh, talking to you. Uh, thank you, Ed Machius. Thank you, uh, Stephen. It was wonderful to spend time together and talk about everything. Thank you. Amazing. Likewise. All right, everybody, thank you so much for listening to the show. If you listen to our show through Spotify or Apple Podcasts, if you have watched this show through YouTube, Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel now so you won't miss out on a video at all. And uh, well, we see you next week with, uh, with Sash. Bye-bye.